And joining me now in our studio is our translator, Osman Maggi, now a doctoral student at Oklahoma State University. Well, Osman, I was struck in watching that video that we shot several years ago, just how prophetic some of the things that you were saying to us. It was almost like you were trying to educate us while we were there, that this was going to be an issue. Yes, uh, what uh, is happening in Mali, we could see is some years ago because of what, because of the infiltration of Islamist groups and also because of this fight between the government of separatist uh, Tuareg groups. So we could say that something is smelling that in the future something will, may happen with uh, religions because I could see these Afghans, Pakistanis groups coming to Bama Mali, crossing Bamako, which is the capital city, to, to talk about Islam, to make lecture. And I did understand about these uh, very strong extremist people coming. You could see them uh, earlier this, uh, this, uh, in 27 in Mali. And, and to educate people a little bit about the geography of Mali, we were down there in, in Bamako, which is in the southern part of Mali, and then you actually grew up in Timbuktu which yes. is in the northern part of the country. Yes, I, I was born and raised in Timbuktu, which is uh, actually many people know about it, which has been a very famous city in the 11th century because of its role in the Trans-Saharian and also because of Timbuktu was hosting one of the most famous universities in the early universities, which is University of San Corre. Yeah, one of the oldest universities in the world. Yes, absolutely. in the world, yes, absolutely, absolutely, which is the uh, University of San Corre. So which, still, which is still in Timbuktu, because as you know, Timbuktu still has uh, uh, thousands of uh, manuscripts which date back to the 11th century and for which people travel to Timbuktu. So Timbuktu is a very touristic city. But unfortunately today, Timbuktu is not controlled by the government of Mali. It's controlled of, by the rebels. It, it's controlled by Islamist groups. It's controlled mainly by Al-Qaeda and uh, other groups calling themselves Mujahu, which is a movement for unity and jihad in West Africa. And another group, which is Ansar Din, which is also a very dangerous group. Actually, in the early, uh, early April, Timbuktu was controlled by both MNLA, which is the Tuareg groups, uh, the Tuareg group, and also by these uh, Islamists. But what has that meant for day-to-day -day life now in that, I'm just calling it rebel controlled, you're calling Islamic extremist controlled parts of Mali now, which is now about two thirds of the country? Yes. What's two, life like? Oh, life is very hard. Life is very hard because today the markets are closed. There is no food stuff in the markets. So the bank, banks are closed. Public services are closed. Hospitals can, with a very, very difficult, are, are, are suffering very, very difficult situation because lack of medicine. So life is very, very hard. And people are obliged to, to go to bordering countries or to Bamako. So today we have about 300,000 people who are displaced within the country. And we have about 500,000 people who are displaced in the bordering countries like Niger, Algeria, Burkina Faso, and uh, Mauritania. So essentially about a half a million people that are uh, refugees in some form or Yes, or fashion. so we have uh, two forms of uh, refugees. We have refugees within the country and also refugees in the bordering countries. We, we have heard quite a few reports of human rights violations. What are what, what, what your friends tell you? What have you seen? Yes, uh, because you know these people when they came to the north of Mali, now they said we want to 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 use our own law, which is Sharia law, according to them. So now they have been cutting hands of some people, and they have also been now uh, before uh, with the MNLA and other groups, they have uh, they have abused of girls and women. And also, some now, like uh, if uh, they find a couple, uh, an unmarried couple, they slash it. Then they give them 100 slash slashes, mm -hmm. beatings. Of, yeah, yes, beatings. Yes, and it is forbidden today to, in Timbuktu to smoke a cigarette or to watch TV or to play football or to stay outside your house with your your friends having some tea. So actually, human right is a big issue in this area today. But what does it mean for women in Mali? For women in, in Mali or, okay, in this area today, life is impossible for women because they are suffering. They cannot, they don't have any right. They have to stay home. They have to, even if they have to go out, they have to be covered. 
So they, they can do anything today. Women are, like, uh, if I can use the word, I will say that they are confined. So these Islamic groups, they want to confine women. Today, they don't have any right. They have to stay home. They can't wear anything. And they destroyed everything for beauty, like uh, beauty shops, like uh, hairdressing shops. All these are closed in Timbuktu and in Gao, Kidal. So women are really confined. They can't do anything. And, and I've seen reports of them also destroying some historical sites, things that have been there literally tens of thousands of years. Yes, mainly in my hometown, which is Timbuktu, the, where we have about 16 uh, World Heritage uh, shrines and mausoleums. So they decided to destroy all. At the date of today, they have destroyed about seven of the shrines in Timbuktu, which is really heartbreaking for people yeah, in Timbuktu. And, and certainly sad. And you know, when we were there in 2007, this was a country that was a successful democracy. Oh, sure. Uh, I was very proud to be a Malian because as a here in the US, people were talking about Mali as an example of democracy in Africa. And we were very proud of that. But today our democracy is failing. Because in addition to this situation with the rebel groups, we had the, uh, we had the political chaos in Mali because we were supposed to have elections this year. Unfortunately, we had this military coup before the elections. And since then, we are in this uh, political chaos. But the hope is today we have an interim government, we have an interim president, and we hope to have the elections. But the issue is, how are we going to have elections in this chaos? Because some people, are displaced or they cannot be they cannot vote because today they don't have any link with the country from what I've read there is a group of uh, the app is it the African Federation they are gathering some troops hopefully wanting to push some of the uh, yes today the out. hope is with uh, African uh, the West African states they have an organization called uh, Economic uh, Community of West African State, which is ECOWAS. They are organizing and they want to send military forces in the north and within Mali to reconquer the north, about 3,300 uh, boots. And probably we have another hope that uh, France is helping, France and the European Union is helping to get a resolution at the uni UN. We already have the resolution 2071, which said to Mali to negotiate with the rebels who are Malians and also we may have another resolution which will help to have to deploy forces to the north of Mali. Yeah. Now I, I know you're out trying to educate people about what's going on in your homeland but what else can we do here in this country? Oh in this country I think we have a serious humanitarian crisis in Mali. And I think people here, I think organizations in the United States here can support uh, humanitarian relief in Mali. So because I was personally involved in a humanitarian organization, which is local and which was made because of this crisis by ourselves, which is called Credecur. So people can go on your website, I will give you the information and then they can support. And they can support the government. I think anyone who can do something can help be it within organizations. If they need directions, if they need to, 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 to talk to someone, I can facilitate that. I can also facilitate how they can be in Mali and how they can support, uh, they can bring response to the humanitarian situation in Mali. Well, we certainly will put up that information as well as your own contact information on our website. Asman, so good to see you, glad you're safe. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this country that many believe could turn into the next Afghanistan, we have much more on our website. Everything from how women in Mali are finding a new voice thanks to radio to a segment looking at our country through the eyes of some Malian journalists who came here to work with us. Just go to OKHorizon.com and look under our value added section. When we return, foreign aid, foreign investment, and the relationship between the two.